you're anything like me, at the end of an RPG your inventory is going to look something like this, and I really don't think this is uncommon. In fact, I've seen this idea joked about all the time. I've been wondering recently exactly why this is, and in the context of my own gameplay, I'll never use a powerful item that seems scarce now, for a fear that I might really get into a situation where I'll need it later. And in a sense, this is a sensible idea. I want to use the item when it will have the greatest effect, but now never seems like the right time. This feeling ends up persisting through the entire game until I beat the final boss and end with an inventory that is, well, a mess. I can think of a few reasons for this. Firstly, is that games generally never require you to use consumable items. We all use health potions in Skyrim because we need to regain health. It's something that will be needed in almost every playthrough as there aren't many options to take no damage. Stamina and Magicka are both useful depending on your playstyle, but I can't think of a situation where I've used any other kind of potion. The game just never puts you in a situation where you can't beat it without topping up those three bars. There are certain items which cure status effects, such as poison, but it feels like these items are almost meaningless as the game is forcing a status effect onto you just to make you use an item that has probably just been given to you. They get used, but there's no dynamic choice or fun involved. It's just undoing an issue that couldn't be avoided. Sekiro does a much better job by giving you some protection from a certain element with a gourd to stop the status effect in the first place, rather than removing it. Games on the whole just aren't hard enough to require you to utilise non-healing consumables to win. Let's even take an infamously difficult game like Bloodborne. Almost every encounter can be won with persistence, which is a good thing, but at the same time, players with less patience or a lower skill level might be turned away because they think there aren't any systems to help them beat the game. Even though items like beast blood pellets and pungent blood cocktails can make some of the early game encounters trivial, they still aren't used by the majority of players. I know I didn't use them on my first playthrough. The only place where I have seen them used prolifically is in speedrunning and blood level 4 runs. Because speedrunners need to get through encounters as fast as possible, and blood level 4 players are literally masochists, they need every advantage they can take. The game never really does a good job of what the consumable items actually do, and what their benefits are to you, and therefore a lot of new players won't know how good they can be. Some other good examples of this are The Last of Us and Resident Evil 4 and their higher difficulties. Most survival horrors do a great job of making it seem like you're just on the edge of running out of ammo or items while keeping the game fair usually forcing you to use every weapon at your disposal, as the ammo for an individual gun will never last for a whole encounter. It's technically possible to beat these games without using ammo, but you're encouraged to use it because you're always being given extra supplies dotted throughout the levels to keep you topped up, especially right after a big fight. Another reason this hoarding behaviour occurs, especially for me, is because you have no idea how scarce these items are going to be. It comes back to the idea of speedrunners using items because they know exactly where to find them and when to use them. They know when to get the most out of the items because they know exactly when they're going to get a replacement. Without the information about how many bosses are left and how many consumables you're actually going to get, you feel like you should keep them just in case. Similar to survival horrors and ammo, if a game automatically gave you a consumable after every fight, you'd use them much more often. In a similar vein, Sekiro promotes the use of emblems by giving you one from almost every enemy you kill. You could also make items replenish on death like Estus in Dark Souls. The trick here being that both games limit your use of those items until you die or rest, but in theory a consumable could also need to be recharged over time like a shower in Skyrim. Another issue is that it's extremely difficult to judge when you will get the greatest effect from an item that only lasts 30 seconds, when you might only get 10 or 20 of them in a single playthrough. This is trying to portion out 5 or 10 minutes of advantage through an entire game's worth of encounters that might last you 20 to 40 hours. That's less than 1% of your playtime in this state. Trying to get a new player to guess the hardest 1% of your game, and not say at the very end, is almost impossible. 
Therefore, all items are automatically encouraged to be kept for the final encounter, where they are rarely used anyway. If each item lasted longer, and were a lot more available to players, they would realise that they probably had enough to use for each semi-difficult encounter in the game and actually use them. At the extreme end of this line of thinking is a permanent upgrade, and I couldn't think of any time a player which wished to make the game easier would choose not to use a permanent upgrade they'd been given. Another interesting way to make items usable is to have certain enemies have very specific weaknesses. I'm much more likely to use a fire buff if the enemy I'm having trouble with is massively weak to fire and this has been communicated to me. It's less force than the poison example but still makes them have much more situational uses that make it clear to the player when they are at their greatest effect. This is another thing Sekiro does extremely well with regard to prosthetic tools such as red-eyed enemies being weak to fire or animals being scared of firecrackers. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is that the main issue with consumable items is that any decently intelligent player is going to want to use them at the right time, but at the same time as this, they are way too scarce in various different ways. By utilising interesting ways to make the time to use them more clear or their availability more available, Games can actually create systems that let players use their consumable items instead of hoard them until the end of the game. Thank you to From Software once again for improving on your game design over and over. Thank you to the Beast Blood Pellet, the most OP consumable that no one uses. And thank you for watching. Cheers.